ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it is my duty to advise you how you should vote when you retire from this court. In the last few weeks, we all heard some pretty extraordinary allegations being made about one of the prettiest about one of the most distinguished politicians <laughs> ever to rise to high office in this country, or not, <laughs> as you may think. We have heard, for example, from Mr. Bex Bissell, <laughs> a man who by his own admission is a liar, a humbug, a hypocrite, a vagabond, a loathsome spotted reptile. <laughs> and a self-confessed chicken strangler. <laughs> you may choose, if you wish, to believe the transparent tissue of odious lies <laughs> which streamed on and on from his disgusting, greedy, slavering lips. <laughs> that is entirely a matter for you. We have been forced to listen to the testimony of Mr. Norma St. John Scott. <laughs> the scoundrel, the parasite, pervert, a worm, a self-confessed player of the pink oboe. <laughs> A man or woman who by his or her own admission chews pillows. <laughs> for kicks. You may believe him to be a vile, discredited and embittered man. A more unreliable witness upon whose testimony to convict a man, who you may rightly think, should have become Prime Minister <laughs> of this country or President of the world. <laughs> you may, on the other hand, choose to believe Mrs. Scott. In which case, I can only say that you need psychiatric help. <laughs> of the type provided by Dr. Gleedle and the Gleedle terms. <laughs> Over the evidence of the so-called hitman, Mr. Olivia newton John, <laughs> I prefer to draw a discreet veil. He is, as we know, a man with a criminal past, but no criminal future. Oh, oh. He's a piece of audio, a piece of excrement, unable to carry out a simple murder plot. without cocking the whole thing up. <laughs> now we turn to the evidence about the money. <laughs> now we've heard from Mr. Jack Hewa and Mr. Nadia Rickshaw, <laughs> neither of whom, as far as I can gather, are complete and utter crooks. <laughs> Though the latter is foreign, 
and is the thought, and is the thought, you might well think, would boil up poisonous biryanis. <laughs> In the middle of the night, and keep you awake with his pagan limbo dancing. <laughs> It is conceded by the defense that the money arrived. What happened to that, we shall never know. That is his affair, and it is not for us to pry. It will be a sad day for this country when a leading politician cannot spend his election expenses. <laughs> In any way he sees fit. <laughs> One further point. You will have noticed that three of the defendants have chosen very wisely to exercise their inalienable right not to go into the witness box to answer a lot of impertinent questions. <laughs> I will merely say that you are not to infer anything from this other than that they consider the evidence against them so flimsy that it was scarcely worth rising from their seats and wasting breath denying these ludicrous charges. Finally, I'd like to pay, to pay a personal tribute to Mr. Thrope's husband, <laughs> Miriam, who has stood by him throughout this long and unnecessary ordeal. I know you'll join with me in wishing them well for a long and happy future. You are now to retire, as indeed should I. <laughs> you are now to retire carefully to consider your verdict of not guilty. <laughs>